All right, y'all. Welcome back. This is Filming in Progress. I'm your host, Jarrell Washington, with my co-host, Isai. And we got our special guest today. Go ahead. Let us know who you are. Thank you. Thank what? you for having me. Shake your hand. Handshake? Shake your hand. Oh, okay. This Thanks is for okay. okay. Thank you for having nice. me. Not a, not a problem. Not a problem, sir. I thought you were trying to drink so my water. So am I introducing myself or yeah, you introduce ahead. me? No, I want you to introduce yourself, okay. man. I like when people introduce themselves. Okay, cool. Uh, first guest, appreciate you having me on. No problem. My name is Adrian. I'm a DP in town, Kansas City, from Topeka, Kansas. Uh, if you don't know what a DP is, director of photography, cinematographer. I do docs. Just got my first commercial. Yes, sir. So I can kind of say I'm a commercial DP. <laughs> Um, yeah, man, got five kids, four kids, one on the way, married to a beautiful wife. Hey, and you got so, another one on the way, man. Yeah, bro. Congratulations. Do Halloween, man. Halloween. Hey. Do Halloween. You didn't know that? I did not. Nah, bro, I've been working. Bro. I, I straight up been so working. Yeah, I yeah bro. Been. About to be father of five, bro. So that's going to be on my bio. Father he, of five. He reminds when you pull me. up to Adrian's house, bro, it's like... Like so many toys in the front yard, <laughs> you gotta like jump over stuff to like knock on the front door. <laughs> bro, bro. He, every time I come, I'm moving like toys yeah. out the garage. Yeah. I'm stepping on Legos. Step over. Sh- oh god, man, I hate stepping on Legos. That's oh, that's that. Sh- yeah, right man. There. So yeah, I think that's a you know I, you know Hell that's yeah, what I man. do. I'm I, I'm happy to have you on, man. Like so, like we were talking earlier. This is really just like kind of getting to know everybody in the city who's like making who's making moves and 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 doing work and i know there's a lot of things you probably can't talk about either so mm-hmm. it's okay if you can't but now go ahead and tell me about um just tell me what you what you've been on lately though man because we haven't really been been talking lately so i just want to know how's life been how's how's the filming how's the shooting going like tell me something about it uh so bro like i was telling you we've been on this dock that like i can't talk much about but right. Uh, like four months, like for four months shooting this doc, I'm the lead DP on it. So that's been keeping me busy. That's like, I love shoots like that because it's like, it's like, it's work coming in. Like it's solid work. It's like, you know, you know, that's coming in yeah. as far as finan- financial wise. I know that, right. And then, so um, ever since, man, ever since um, really, honestly, like we were saying, ever since we shot that short film, uh, I am Jada Williams. Yeah. Check it out. Check um, it out. It, doors have kind of opened, you know what I'm saying? From that. And really just just having that as a body, you know, as a piece of a whole body of work, people seeing what I can do, mm-hmm. you know, what I mean, and reaching out through Instagram or bro, or, uh, bro whatever, I want to I want to talk mean? about that because yeah, because me and you were in the hotel room when you like told me the idea. Yeah, for it. yeah, bro. We, were in we called Jarrell. Hey, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, bro, I need your help. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, because we were in Chicago on another shoot. Right. And I was in his in his room. We were eating dinner, mm-hmm. watching like TV yeah, or something. Chipotle. Yeah, yeah, Chipotle. Yep. It was a snowstorm, by the snowstorm, way. Snowstorm, yeah, bro, crazy. like a blizzard. But Adrian was like, yeah, man, I have this idea for a passion project. And I was like, yeah, bro, let me hear it. He's like, well, I just, I was like, I need help, like, kind of producing it because it's, like, so many moving parts. I was like, I need a crew, bro. Yeah, I need yeah. a crew. And I was like, bro, I got you. So I was like, let me call Jarrell. <laughs> <laughs> literally. Bro, that's funny. He <laughs> literally called you. And then we kind of talked about it. But um, it was it was really dope to see, like. The very, very like bro, concept. literally, bro. I'm like, dang, bro. We, like, we might have to shoot this in like two weeks. Yeah. Like that night, I'm like, man, I gotta start with the script and the references. Yeah, and, and I the, remember. And the look would... and the tone. Like that night, I started. I was like, man, like bro, I was just. <laughs> you know what bro, I, mean? like, I literally made him a million note. Like yeah, a million yeah, note that night. Like, yeah. Right. I was like, <laughs> like, I gotta guide you, bro. Cause you know, this is gonna get I was like, dang, man, I gotta get started on this, man. Like. And so yeah, bro, that was that was that was the beginning, the very beginning stages of that. Bro, yeah. that that but, project was so dope. If you have not seen I Am Jada yet, appreciate, please appreciate. go check that yeah. shit out. I had to, I had to. He look like I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to produce that as to the capacity as I could. I got sick on set, y'all. Um, <laughs> this was bad. So check this out. Did I, did I tell y'all how I got sick? Did I re- disclose that? All I know is, uh, you know, shoot the first shoot day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Darrell rose up. Half dead. I'm like, bro, what is going on? Yeah, he didn't oh, look man, good. I didn't even sleep. I'm like, bro, why didn't you tell me, bro? Like, like we would have like, bro, just bro go Jarrell, home and go Jarrell to sleep. looked so sick. I was like, I gotta keep my distance. I'm not trying to get whatever he got. I was like, bro, I'm here for you, but like, stay over there. Low. On the low, bro. bro I so I'm half dead, bro. I'm like half dead, and like, so what happened was. Was I was I was driving back from Indiana that night because I had just oh, I, right. I had just visited some family. We just had a funeral for a buddy of mine and all that who who had just passed away, unfortunately. And um, I wanted to stay an extra day just because I didn't get as much family time as I wanted to. So I was like, I'll just drive back night before shoot. I'll get there day of sh- like morning of shoot and it'd be cool. Like I know I know my limits. I know my I know my limits. But bro, I was hungry and I just kept yeah, driving. For real. Oh, for real. 
and I was like, I you was got, hungry I, physically, or you was hungry to like? I work? was I was hungry physically. Like, <laughs> I, was, I was hungry for like three hours okay. of drive. I thought he was hungry to like you know, produce. No, like, man, I, I got this hunger. Literally, like, I left I left Evansville. <laughs> like from Evansville to KC, it's like a seven. It's a seven hour drive straight up. So if you just keep going, it's seven hours flat. If you stop for gas, it's seven and a half. But bro, like three hours in, I was gonna get food in St. Louis, and I was just was like, got in my head. I was like, nah, I just I just gotta keep getting there. And so I just keep driving. All of a sudden, next thing I know, it's like 12 something, one something. I'm like, shit, I ain't, I ain't going to be able to eat really like I wanted to. <laughs> so I stop at a Love's. Mm. I figure, hey, man, these sandwiches got to be right. That's like, your first mistake. They, 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 they look fresh. Like, why, why, like, I even had the thought in my head, I was like, why would these? Why would they put bad sandwiches out right. here? You had that thought. Yeah, I had that thought, and like, sure enough, that can go wrong. But that's your, that's your that. hungry mind though, because yeah, you're stopping at midnight at a love in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of nowhere bro. in Missouri, bro. Logically, you'd be like, bro, because I thought I thought the uh, I thought the Popeyes next to it was open, so I I I pull off the interstate and everything, thing, and I'm about to hit this Popeyes open late. Nah, bro, <laughs> and I and like I I so I I took that I took that chicken salad sandwich, and I, no, it wasn't chicken salad. It was like ham and Cheese. I was like, how can you oh, go wrong cheese, with like man. ham and cheese? Like, there's you, you can can't go wrong with, go wrong with yes, you can go so wrong. <laughs> we witnessed it. So, <laughs> so like I, I I inhaled that. I was like, you know what? Everything is cool. I had some orange juice to down it down with, and and then as we driving, as I'm keep driving, I start and when I pull up, I notice I got like the sulfur burps, and I'm like, ah shit, this this don't seem right. It's like, nah, I'm bro. Just explain the sulfur burps because I never, you I never had, sulfur? I never heard so of that. So when you either. When you have gas gastro, like you know, like when things are bubbling up down there, and you and you like burp, it it smells like rot. It tastes like rotten eggs, oh. like one hundred percent rotten eggs. Bro, and, you making my stomach hurt. Bro. And and that's how I knew I was like, I'm about to. I'm sulfur either. Burp. I'm about bro, to. If either, I sulfur burp, I would throw up immediately. Just taste that. Bro, exactly. Like I'd be like, Ugh. and that's when I knew I was like, I'm because like, it started happening as soon as I pulled it up to location. I was like. I'm, I'm not gonna say nothing. I, I just think I'm, I'm gonna get past it through the day. We are gonna eat lunch, and I'm gonna get past it through the day. And like I was cool all day. Like yeah, I was burping and I was like coughing a little, and I and I could taste it. And like when we went uh, after lunch, yeah, a, a, I went. To, I was in the bathroom downstairs on the bottom level. And I was like, I'm gonna go in here real quick. I had to use the bathroom for a little bit. Like yeah, I was I was doing my thing, but like it wasn't that bad. So. I thought everything was cool until the very end, bro. And y'all all saw what happened the very end. Shout out to my man, Dylan Grove. So, because Dylan held me down. Bro, we, Adrian's calling rap, and I straight up just start throwing up everywhere in this person's, in this person's rock garden. <laughs> I'm hoping, like, I'm like, where's the hope? The owner's not there. Like, everyone's like, really, Devin's just guarding me. Like, yeah, my man's okay. Don't even, don't even worry yeah, about him right there. But, like, I, I was just so eager to, like, but I remember the next day, you, you, uh, I was like, "Hey, y'all, we're set." You're like, "No, nah, you're not, you're not coming today, bro." <laughs> I was He's like, like, "Man, I, I can work through it." I'm like, "Bro, just take your butt home to sleep." And like, I was so butt hurt because I was like, "Man, this project was gonna be so dope," and I feel like I let everybody down because my ass was eating a sandwich at twelve o'clock from Love's. This is bullshit. I should have just kept getting. Just cause, like, oh, bro, man. you made that call because I'm like, bro, look, you don't have to come for real. Like, if you feeling his eye, right, man, I'm gonna just chill. I'm like, yeah. bet. Bro. I mean, that's true too. Yeah. And like, yeah. I I did like the rest of that night, um, like the rest of that day, like I did feel like shit. Like, yeah. I, I appreciate that because yeah, yeah, sure. I didn't feel good until like two days later. And I, bro, that yeah. was the worst, worst food. No, yeah, that was the worst food poison I've ever had. These type of life. conversations make me happy. I'm vegetarian, bro. Bro, like, don't. I've never man. have to worry about this. Yeah, you ain't true. never got to worry about this thing, bro. Some hummus and carrots, and that's gonna give me food poisoning. Nah, I'm straight, bro. bro like, <laughs> don't, don't stop at Love's at twelve thirty. Don't, at don't night. stop anywhere. Don't at stop anywhere unless you got unless there's a Taco Bell open late, man. Or Taco trip. Bell, no, 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 no. no. Like, I, 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 Taco Bell's good. No. I, I, I stand. By Taco you Bell. stand by Taco Bell well, yes. as a vegetarian, for bro, real. Yeah, Taco no, Bell has some good no veggie. Why don't you bro. stand by Taco Bell, bro? That it, first of all, there's not a good Taco Bell <laughs> that puts the meat one in, the, in your tacos or burritos. There's not one. Yeah, that's why. But, Second of all, like it goes straight through you. So, yeah, so you had, I don't you eat, I don't eat the meat at Taco Bell, so I wouldn't know. I, I, I did eat. I did start getting ever since you put me. I did start getting cheese and rice bean burritos. Those are fire. Like, those are fire. Yeah. Yeah. Every yeah. once in a while, I'll have a, a Doritos Locos tacos. Okay, Doritos okay. Locos. That's what you messed up, bro. Those that's are too, fire. Too much. Those are fire. Does that make Man. you sick? No, those are fire. 
But uh, that's, that's see, it. I, I can't. Did they do... stop making those? Because I haven't. No, seen them they only make the nacho cheese. They don't make Cool Ranch, yeah, which I don't. Cheese. I don't understand why. I thought Cool Ranch, cool ranch sounds kind of gross. No, though, man, a Cool Ranch is flame. I don't know. About that. See, this is the type of shit we talk about on Film <laughs> Progress, y'all. We talk about getting sick, filming. Bro, you and, made my stomach and, hurt. <laughs> but no, but like it, that was. I am Jada though. That 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 really. I go for him. <laughs> Hold on. Before we get there, I got to give you props because you really toughed it out, bro. Because oh, now, like, sure. as you explain it, like in retrospect, you must have been super sick just to like let it explode at the end of the hey, day. You know, <laughs> hey, you know what it was? It was the dunk contest, bro, that we Yo, had. you ain't lying. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you, hey, I got BTS footage of it, bro. I ain't posted it yet, bro. But, bro all right, we had a full on dunk full contest. Full on dunk bro. contest. After, <laughs> after that, bro, this dude was I was joking <laughs> all up in the air trying to do all the things, knowing I shouldn't have been doing it. And that's what, because I, I felt yeah, that shit shaking yeah. up, man. Yeah, it oh was his God. pride, bro. Dude. He seen me, you know, yamming. Man, yeah. Let me get behind. Let me get my shit going. Nah, man, I should have just. Stay to the side, bro. But, uh, but but no, nah, like low, low key though, that was such a a dope project, and I I appreciate, I appreciate you, the hell out of you for still even like letting me be a part of that and still giving me the producer credit. Like that was for the sure. like that was one of the best projects, and like I think probably of this like, year. Yeah, bro, of I'll this say year, like, one in, of the in, dopest in projects, like yeah, yeah. dopest projects yeah. I've ever of been a part year. of. Appreciate so that. I cannot wait. Like I even had the I like I was we even like talked more about like doing more to it and putting mm-hmm. on more to the concept yeah. of like man, let's see if we can make this a series and start mm-hmm. actually like getting kids in front of the camera and showing these because like how now that uh college college players can right. get their sponsorships now. Yeah, yeah that's a whole. So this is another level to like all right, let's let's start with these high schools and start showing yeah. these high schoolers like hey, this is how you do it. And then exactly. you know, obviously yeah. step by step, and you know you know but, more about the the sports and the NCAA mm-hmm. too. I mean, I I ran track one year, and I wish I would have like stuck with the uh, NCAA, but like it was, I just know it wasn't for me in the end of the yeah, day. Yeah. So yeah. like, what, give me your mindset on now, like now that athletes can get paid, college athletes can get paid for for their sponsorships and whatnot. Bro, I'm gonna go back on just uh just how that Jada project came about and the athlete that we used. Oh uh, yeah, please do actually. You know Let's I mean? talk about Jada and, real and quick what, and why I did it. Because um, I think I was telling you, I was telling somebody, I was in the middle of like, um, you know what? Okay, I, I think I was talking about you, like how I had like mapped out like a, a strategy. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. All, we could take it all the way back, way before Jada, like mapped out a strategy. I started shooting, um, started shooting on Red on, on sports projects. I got linked in with a, a really great director producer, um, Second Wind Films, Second Wind Creative. Yeah, they do awesome work. I got I got hooked up with them. Uh, Micah, great friend, um, just just a great overall person. We started working together, and so uh, he he really allowed me to get a lot of red experience. I told him when we met up, I'm like, I really may want to get some experience on like uh, on these red cameras and, and just kind of move my career in this way. And he gave me he opened that door for me. Just like the next week, he was like, Hey man, what are you doing next week? Hop on the shoot. That's and I'm like that, and it, it just things started rolling from there. That's how you. And do so it. we linked up, and I started working with him more, getting more familiar with uh, red cameras. And so I was able to after, after working. Uh, I think I met him like maybe a year later. We linked back up after the pandemic, and work just started just going. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was able to buy a red camera, and um, it was like, okay, I'm gonna invest. This is a huge investment. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I already have a C300, but this red's gonna put me in a different category. Mm-hmm. And so my, you know, me and my wife were talking about it. And I told her I laid it out for her. I'm like, I'm gonna buy this camera. Uh, it's gonna open up more doors. You know what I mean? And what I'm gonna do is do a spec spec project, a project that's just gonna like, I I can put my own thing on it to show what I'm capable to do with like, you know, a high end cinema camera, mm-hmm. you know, with my directing, with my lighting, with my already experience. I want to just put something out there that's just gonna establish me. You know what I mean? Gosh dang it! Drew. <laughs> I knew someone was gonna call. Should what? I answer or should I hang up? It's no, hang up. All right. <laughs> So, um, anyways, right in the middle of my story. Thanks, my bad, real. my bad. No, no, no. So, anyways, I mapped out this strategy. I'm gonna purchase this camera and I'm gonna do a project. And I don't know what the project's gonna be, but this is gonna like, like I'm I want to do something and I want to kill it to right. show like this is what I'm about. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? You yep. see this work. This is what I can do. And so, um, I was so I had done that and I was in the middle of like thinking of a you know a short film to do or something like a, some spec project or whatever and that's when Jada I had uh, known Jada a little while from my goddaughter oh, okay. then connecting and um, you know in the sports world like in the female sports world okay. like she got me back into the gym and we started going to this trainer and mm-hmm. that's how we connected initially but she reached out to me it was like hey you know I want to do this video for my commitment you're the only person I want to do it and um, you know but I want to do a film I'm like it's like perfect timing yeah. I'm like I'm looking for a film to do 
And then that month, happened, that month of uh, March, I just happened to like not book any shoot. It was like dead. And so like I got the time. Mm. And so that's how that came about. And I'm like, okay, let's do this. You know, mm-hmm. this is that project that I'm that I had planned out. You know, I didn't know what it was. And then this was just, I was like, let's just tell your story. So anyway, so I, I want to say all that just because like it was, it was strategic. Yeah. And just, mm-hmm. and just uh, doing the, do, do what, whatever, if it was that film or a different film, it was a strategic move yeah. to do something to like, okay, this is what I can do. And it just mm-hmm. so happened to be that, which Bro. was a really, you know what I'm saying? Almost like perfect. Just the, the storyline and everything like it that. Was and how it was beautiful. And then y'all got to go out to LA. Oh my God. That yeah, footage was yeah. amazing. It was a, it was a dope, dope shoot, bro. Like, you know, two I gotta, days. I got to give Adrian a lot of props though. Because like, he's one of the first like DP slash directors that trust me a lot. Because the first day we went out to LA, I went by myself. Yeah, and he yeah, was yeah. like, I just yeah. sent him with the camera. I'm like, bro, yeah. you know, you, you got it, bro. You know what I mean? Because I had a shoot. I had a shoot. Uh, we booked the shoots, but then I had a shoot. For ESPN, it was just some already out interview. there. No, 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 like in Kansas City. Oh, so I'm like, okay, damn, I gotta okay. take a later flight yeah. because I because I had already like passed up on another ESPN shoot right. to do the shoot, like a two day shoot. It would have been like you know a couple thousand. So yeah. like, I can't pass up on any more money yeah, doing yeah. this you know passion project. And so I was like, bro, you got this. Yeah, you know what I mean. What? And trust My me, bro. Yeah, is red. We flew out there and like we. I mean, it was great. We got some really good takes and stuff. But that's one thing I always remember. I'm like, damn, like he really gave me that shot. Like. Yeah, yeah. And working with other people, like they're a lot more stingy with mm-hmm. it, you know, especially yeah, yeah. with the vision. They're like, nah, like Boy, I gotta micromanage you know. everything. But with Adrian, yeah. like he always was like, bro, you got it. And and I really appreciate, appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, no, I appreciate you, bro, because uh a lot of his um a lot of a lot of those LA shots at the end were East Ah, uh, You know what I'm saying? The dude. Kobe Bryant, the uh my the dude. on campus UCLA, the shoes. You yeah. know what I mean, and then I came and I came and did the the, the beach scene. Okay, yeah. you know okay. when she wait. Was so bills. you you went out first and then you yeah, came out. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. we shot that the next day. Yeah, man. So, if I would have had the so. bra, I just went with y'all. I didn't even know what <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro. And it was chill too. It was super chill. We just yeah. rode and we seen everything. Her, like, her family was so cool. Like everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Shout out to the whole yeah. fam, bro. Yeah. Yeah. They were really, really dope, bro. But that that project really did like so. Like, how do you um? So what's what's next for you then? You just you, after this doc too. You, so, so you. So man, so when, when I when I like I was telling you earlier, bro. Like I put that out, and I just knew I'm like, man, you you just never know what doors is gonna open up. But mm-hmm. but it really because uh, a lot of stuff I shoot, I don't share or I don't show, share the video right. because it's just like talking heads, it's interviews. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? It's like it, it's pain. It's it's a good rate, but it's not stuff that you can just like just put out there and be like. You know, this is what I'm about. Mm-hmm. So that's why spec projects are so important mm-hmm. because um, you're able to do something that puts that has your own identity on it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You put your own stamp on it. You're able to 100%. control the directing, the light, whatever it is you want to show, you're able to show it. Mm-hmm. And so that project for me, you know, I, I knew I was going to put that out there and uh, continue to do what I was doing, you know, getting to work with sports and stuff and documentaries. And uh, But it really has like, bro, I've, I've, when people see that, like I've gotten hired because because they're like, man, yeah, you should check out this. Uh, like once the producer hired me, we'll be on set and they'll be talking to talent and be like, yeah, like you should see his work. It's amazing. Like check out this this video that he did yeah. or whatever. You know, it's bro. like it's just a part of the overall body of work. Like, mm-hmm. I should, you know what I mean? And yeah. so that's what like after that, bro, I was able to just like kind of like see what happens and not really like grind you know, to do some, to do another spec project, whatever. That's really just been like a really good look for me as oh, a DP. Yeah. You know oh what yeah, I'm saying? man. I'm so happy for you, bro. You've been, like I said, you've been thriving and killing it. And Appreciate like, you, I, yeah. I've always, and I, and I truly admire you because you, like you said, you have five kids or well, you got four, but one on the way. Like yeah. you are a five, family Five probably when man. this drops. I'll probably. <laughs> 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 he, he, she's coming soon. She's oh coming my soon. God. Like you are a straight up. And like the only other person I could think about that who can manage this kind of work and his kids is Chris Rail, because Chris has I think Chris has six kids. Yeah, um, no. and he he's a. Bro, he, you don't meet a lot of DPs with like his. You don't. DPs and well, Chris, Chris is a Chris is a producer at Nestle, so uh, like he oh, yeah, yeah. he's That's always lot, flying, always yeah. here and there. But he he always manages to make the cross country meets, make the basketball games, mm-hmm. make the recitals, yeah. and it's just like, bro, like you are Superman. Like yeah. I Literally. truly do. Yeah. Like, Appreciate you. No, you know who, you, bro? bro? It's my wife. Oh yeah, that's true. Shout out, shout out to the wives yeah. out there. My bro. wife is the MVP, like yeah. straight up. You know what I'm saying? The like support. And every all. and even when we do, like even like when we do like ministry stuff with, with our church, it's like she she's holding it down. Like she cooks and she's allows me. She allows me to like 
handle, you know what I'm saying? Like if we need to bring somebody and talk to them mm-hmm. or, you know what I'm saying? Like she, she's always like that backbone Hell yeah. to allow me to do what we need to do for our family or for mm-hmm. whoever to help people out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And she, so yeah, no, she's the MVP. You know Bro, what I'm saying? Like, straight 100%. Up. That's a hundred percent because I like, I kid you not. If you are a female and you are trying to date a filmmaker, you better have the strength and the will because yeah. we are on a whole different ball game. <laughs> and, and <laughs> it was dopers, bro. Like she, like she, like when I started, even in this industry, even not as a freelancer, like she knows, like traveling is included. If you're gonna mm-hmm. like make a living, like traveling is included. Yeah. yeah. But man, I've been so blessed that like um, I've been able to get like a lot of out of town, like producers, directors, right. agencies from out of town needing a local DP. And I, I I get booked a lot of like out of town people needing a local cinematographer. And so I've been, I, I think, man, I know for sure, like that's God because he knows like that I don't like traveling a ton, a ton of being with my family. Mm-hmm. So I get a lot of that work, bro. And I actually don't have a, a ton of like in in town connections as of now. You know what I'm saying? Uh, when it comes to agency and stuff. So it's, you know, so it's like, it's crazy because that's a whole nother piece of, piece of the pie that the potential, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? That I, I still haven't even even hit that yet. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And, and I mean, you know what I'm saying? So, and so it's just, I'm, I'm, I'm right. excited, you know what I'm saying? For the future, because right. once, you know what I'm saying? Once yes. I make those connections, it's and, a whole nother lane, you know? And KC right now itself is, it's blowing up. Like it, it really is. And I don't know if it's ramping up just because it's about to get, hopefully not the worst and shut down, but like, I hope it's ramping up because I, I was talking to um Dan Lorraine Mm-hmm. Uh, shout out oh, to Dan. Yeah, shout, shout out to Dan, out to man. Dan. <laughs> Dan, Dan is the man. I hope I hope I can get Dan on this. Well, we're gonna send him this clip. Just yeah, low key, yeah. I am gonna send him this clip. Um, but I remember talking to Dan on the McDonald's job with uh with RW two, and he was like, "I have not seen everybody this busy." And like, if you Dang. if you would ask me four years ago, four or five years ago, it, it was dry. Like, there yeah. you're lucky. Really? There's one job out here for everybody. Wow. There's one or two, and he's yeah. like. You can hardly get find anybody nowadays. And like the other day, like I told you, when I was trying to find a trying to find an AC, like bro, everybody was booked. Yeah, everybody yeah. was booked. So trying to like thumb through, and then you you got at the last resort, you got to just hit that Facebook post <laughs> and hope for the best. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm available. Anybody in town, holla at your boy DP. You like, know what I'm saying? Yeah, like if you need if you need a DP AC, like you know my man, my man's right here. Like you know it. But uh, but Dan's an OG. He's been around in the industry for how many years? Dan, like phew, since, yeah, just before. I mean, probably easily a good twenty years. I know. So Dan's him been in saying industry. that is crazy because yeah, we, it is crazy we he knows. see it. Yeah, like yeah, we, exactly. We see it as like, especially like you, me and you, because me and you are super fresh. Like mm-hmm. we just finished film school not too long ago. Not, not too, eighteen, like two, bro. Yeah, two, two years ago. So, bro, I've been in the game for three years. Like as a yeah, freelancer. Yeah, I'm fresh. Exactly. You know what I'm saying yeah. Any, anybody who's still in that like. I've one to three is definitely still. I even actually you don't hit you don't hit veteran until after your fourth year. I don't think. I, and even then, I that's would five. say after yeah five five, like, five is yeah. a good number actually. Be- like veterans like ten. I think Bro, like Roger Brannett, for instance. He <laughs> is the OG. <laughs> yeah, shout the OG. out to Roger yeah, once again. Roger. We we just getting started. Yeah. yeah, like you know we, what I'm saying? we like, are just getting started. Just bro. getting started, and that's what's exciting. That's what's really exciting. And, you know what's dope is that like is that like we met. You know what I'm saying? We both. We met, oh yeah, we met sep- all, all three bro, separately. Bro, we we met on the, the set of you shoot videos, um, and I, that's where I met a ton of people. Leron, my guy, shout out to Leron, um, and that was the beginning of my like, man, I'm just trying to grind. And you thought I was a grip Low because key, I just helped yeah. out on the shoot. Yeah, because yeah. I, I even was hit G- him up. Hey, <laughs> I was doing my thing, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like he first was, time G and E, and I didn't know any of the comms. Yeah, you know, but, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know because Will was on, Will was on that too, and yeah. uh, I would not have known. We got to make a mental note because I want to talk about like being on set and doing stupid shit because you just don't know. <laughs> and I have so many stories, right. but we'll come back to that. We'll yeah, come back yeah. to that. <laughs> so cool story, bro. Funny story. I was telling you, uh, this man thought I was like a grip. And then like we just we just hit it off, bro. Yeah, you know what did. I mean. We it was like really a couple people I just hit it off with. Yeah, and I'm so glad I was on that shoot. It's grueling four days. You know what I'm saying? But um, I'm grateful because of the connections that I made. Yeah, 100%. and it was just fun, bro. We just had fun. Yeah, and um, it was a great great story too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it, it was a beautiful story. Yeah. and um, so anyway, so we we hit it off, and uh, and then like later, um, I was telling you, I was like, yeah, I'm a I'm a DP, bro. I'm just helping. 
And, it, and he's like, okay, yeah, everybody says they're a DP, you know? <laughs> and then, like, it was like a week later, I dropped my uh, my uh, Kelvin Tiller, Mama's Boy short film. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I got this I got this short film coming out, you know what I'm saying? And then, like, I don't know, we we talked maybe a couple months later. He was like, bro, when you dropped that, bro, like, I thought you was, like, thought you were for real DP. You were an actual yeah. DP. Yeah. You were an actual DP, bro. My I didn't bad. know that. <laughs> yeah. My bad, man. I'm like, yeah, bro, I tried telling you, though. Like, so we met way before you and Jerome. <laughs> yeah, man. because he actually helped me make in uh Kelvin yeah. the mama's boy. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the cool story about this, bro, is like literally, bro, like fresh, you know what I'm saying? I'm like me, me and my boy Mike, shout out to my, my boy Mike, Michael Salvador, aka uh, Mike. Chef Sal- Salabar. Chef yep. Salabar. Hey. Uh, that's my right hand man. But so we 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 went out to I had just got this lens, uh just bought my C three hundred Mark II. I just got this Zeiss lens. Uh it was a Zeiss Melvis. 85 yeah. or whatever and i was just going out there the first friday just to test it out right like we was just like we didn't have nothing to do i'm like man let's just make a little short film or whatever yeah so I, so i got there like literally just turned to black got on crossroads or whatever on first fridays in downtown kansas city and i seen this guy and he's like hey man what kind of camera is that that's cool bro <laughs> and so we just started chopping it up yeah you know what I mean? he's like i'm actually a filmmaker bro uh you know so we, oh, we linked shit. up and uh he i was like man i actually got like this short film he's like bro i'll help you yeah, you know what I'm bro. bro <laughs> that, like, literally, bro, that's we why just I connected this, man. just on yeah. the street because yeah. I had a C300 in my hand. Yeah, <laughs> and bro. then like a couple weeks later, uh, you know, I, I hit him up. You know what I'm saying? For the, to, to be on, it's yeah. the thing, man. Yeah. See, I, I love how that works because I, I feel like definitely as of lately, we've been you you meet people for a reason in your life, for and, sure. and for sure. I I I met you for a reason in my life because, bro, the things that we've done, the things that we're doing, like yeah. I am truly blessed to call you not only like my friend but my business partner, yeah. And like to have to have you in my circle as well, like yeah, even though sure. we haven't we haven't really uh, kept in touch lately, but, but like, it's I, love every time. But it's love yeah, every yeah. single yeah. time, and I know like when there's something going on, if we need it, it's like, bro, we gotta call Adrian and like, all right, fool, yeah. fuck it. And he's and and you're on because yeah, yeah. like that's just the love we have for each other. So like. Always keep 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 your circle tight. Yeah, and, yeah, and but what you say, I don't even mean to cut you off. Oh, you good, you good. What I was saying in the beginning is that like, what's cool is that we're we're all fresh, but we're all coming up together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I was looking for, bro. Like when I when I would like when I was a freelancer, I'm like, man, they're always linked up with this person, this person, and it just organically, yeah. you know, what I mean, it just you just works. find those people. And what happens is that like the importance of putting yourself out there. Yeah, you know 100%. what I'm saying. So like when I was like just fresh. Fresh off the boat, you know what I'm saying, into this world, like into the freelance mm-hmm. world. I was like going everywhere. Like that thing with uh where I met you is like me and Mike was like, man, let's just, you know, do something. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Let's just shoot something. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Shoot, you shoot videos free. But I'm like, man, I, need, I don't know anybody in this town, in this world. Yeah. I'm going to just go in and help. Because, right. I, you know, I just put myself out there, network. You know what I'm saying? And so you, so how how did you, who linked you up on USV? Okay. So uh I was working at Cerner. I was an in-house cinematographer, but I also would like direct big shoots for okay. them. And that's why I went there because I'm like, I need I need to be in a bigger market. I'm from Topeka. I was working in Topeka. I was living in Kansas City at the time, just finished college, and I got a job, a video job into at a small agency in, in Topeka. But I was still commuting. I was commuting in Kansas City because I was trying to find a job in Kansas City. I just right. so happened to find a job in Topeka. I'm like, I don't want to be in Topeka. Right. But anyway, so after a few years there, um, I got an opportunity to work at Cerner as an in-house cinematographer, and I wanted to get bigger like just, I wanted to get experience working on bigger sets. Mm-hmm. And so I, I I did, and we had this one shoot. That's where I met Roger Brand, some of the OGs, okay, okay. Bill Thomas. Bill, um, yeah, Wild Bill, shout out yeah. to Wild Bill, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we had this shoot, man. It was like, you know, a big shoot, over $100,000, you know what I'm saying? We had it like, and I and I was directing it. But I, re- and I, for some reason, I was on Facebook and I seen this video, this music video, and I'm like, man, who shot this? And it was this guy named Morgan Cooper. I'm like, bro, if he would shoot the way I would shoot, like I just saw the talent, right? And so uh, when I when I had this opportunity to direct, I hit him up. I was like, "Hey, bro, I really I'm directing this shoot. Really would love to work with you, yada yada, whatever." We just connected through there. Yeah. Uh, did not end up hiring him because like the powers that be was like, "No, we want to go with this one guy that we already worked with." Yeah. And that's how like gatekeeping. You know what I'm saying? That's okay. a whole nother story. Yeah, just like yeah. here I am, person of color, bro. The only person of color on this whole team. I'm trying to bring another person of color on. Cause he's talented and mm-hmm. I knew he would do mm-hmm. the job, but like yeah. another person side stepped in, like, no, there's, but anyways, uh, the DP we hired ended up doing a good job. Great guy. Um, but anyways, that's how I hooked up with Morgan. And then we would just see each other at networking events, uh, okay. like by design, yeah. uh, networking events. Yeah. I linked up with him there. Yeah. And so we just was always like on a respect level, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, and so when, so Johnny reached out to me 
and was like, hey, Morgan wants you to shoot or help. You know what I'm saying? I was like, all right, cool. I ain't got nothing. You know what I'm saying? So that's how that connection Fine. would happen. Okay. Because mm-hmm. okay. uh, I, I, I know knew that. Morgan a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so they reached out to me. It's like, hey, we need you on G&E. I was like, I don't even know what G&E is, but I'll do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I had to like, Google some friends, stuff. Bro. G&E. What? Oh, so, Grip I have a story about <laughs> G&E, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, what? We're talking about putting yourself out there. Literally last, it was January 2020. Someone put a post. They're like, hey, we're having a, a networking event for this film called The Stylist. And we're going to be oh, at Jay Rieger's. Oh, yeah. And um, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'll go. Like, you know, I'm thinking like, okay, I'll try to be like on the camera department, do something like that. And at that point, I really just worked like as an AC or even a PA, camera right. PA and stuff. So I was like, yeah. So we get there and like, I didn't realize that no one there, that everyone there was from Chicago. Oh, for real? Because it was a Chicago crew, Chicago, mm-hmm. like the director was from here, but every, the whole crew was from Chicago. So I'm there and I'm like, bro, I don't know anybody here. <laughs> so I'm like going back to the post, like, all right, what is their profile picture look like? <laughs> and I'm like trying to like find like who posted this. <laughs> and like for like 20 minutes, bro, it's packed. It's a Friday night. Like I'm just like awkward, like looking in Squinty and it's dark too. Damn. So I couldn't really see faces and I'm like zooming in. And then Tom Gavin hey, came as well. So when I saw him, out. I was like, oh, right. thank so God. It's a familiar face. Yeah. Funny off topic story, like, he gave me a hug and Tom's taller than me. He's yeah. like 6'1", six, 6'2". Six, and he like gave me a hug, bro. And my whole, like, I had a jacket on. So my whole like like shirt came up. <laughs> but I forgot my belt. So like my butt crack was just hanging out. <laughs> and like he hadn't seen me in like a year. So he's like lifting you yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, like, hold up. <laughs> I, I, I gotta touch the ground, bro. Like, yeah, I gotta put my pants up. But anyway, that's off topic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh my god but the, yeah so i guess we just looked like we were looking for people and one of the girls like well hey you here for the film meetup mm-hmm. and we we're like yeah you know where they're at it's like yeah follow me so we get there and like we were networking talking to everybody and you know like i really just work in the room trying to talk to everyone and they're like yeah like we'll see how it goes we're still trying to crew up so we'll keep you in, in on our list or whatever and then like probably a month later um they called me because they needed a grip. I guess the, one of their one of their grips went down. I think Tony was supposed to be on it, and he had just gotten injured. So they were trying to like oh, figure yeah. out who to be on the G and E, and they hit me up. And like, I was what like, about that guy that has shown his butt crack? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. he'll be great, G and E. He has drive. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. but yeah, so the type of guy that forgets a belt. Yeah. I like that I guy. Remember that butt crack. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's a networking tip. Always show your butt crack. Always you'll never show your be, butt crack. Yeah. They'll always remember. Either you're going sure to jail or you'll be never be, or you're getting called back. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so they hit me up and I don't like I barely know what Genie is. Like I've never worked Genie like in my life. Right. You know? Yeah, no, it's a learning curve. Literally, bro. So I pull up and I'm like, bro, like the, the walkies was a, a learning thing. Yeah, like, I no, never yeah, used walkies. Same, same. Yeah. Like I spent like 10 minutes trying to get like the clip on the back of my shirt <laughs> and like the walkie here and like the earpiece right and Someone saw me struggling. They tried to tell me what to do. And I was like, dang, this is like embarrassing. You're, eat, you're eating bro. your mic. You're eating your mic. Yeah, bro, <laughs> the whole genie hated me because I would just push the button. Bro, you be king. Oh, yeah, my God. Bro, I hate, he was so I mad. Shout out to bro. Connor. Shout out to the whole genie team. Bro. I he hate was, people who key, bro. That's he was just so, so mad. Bro. But hey, the good thing is, bro, it's like um, I was like, uh, I was basically like best boy or like key grip to, yeah. to uh, Tristan. And Tristan was hella cool. Tristan's, Tristan's dope. Cool. Tristan's dope. Yeah, he's funny too, man. <laughs> uh, guy from LA. Uh, shout out to Tristan. But um, I think it's a thing was like when somebody got to say shout out to him. But um, that's, you know, on the you should always give shout outs. If, if, if you throw yeah. somebody out, yeah, you should always give them a shout yeah, out. Shout, 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 There's shout. one person we haven't shouted out, but you know, we ain't gonna we ain't gonna disclose that. Anyways, but uh, <laughs> 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 learning G and E, bro. Learning G and E, and like learning like. Like I had worked with gaffers before, but like lo- knowing like what they do and how important they are the, to the DP, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like 100%. a whole nother appreciation for the whole g and and gaffer team as yeah. a DP Amen. and a director, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Cause it's like, they hold it down. Yeah. And uh, it was so funny, bro. Like uh, on that shoot, Tr- <laughs> Tristan was just like, you know, it's like, we had some long days on that shoot too. <laughs> and he was just like, yeah, man, you know, you do stuff. And and he was just, you know, talking. He was like, yeah, you know, you know we. He was just kind of explaining what the industry was. And, yeah, and you yeah. know, the DP takes all the credit. You know, that's just how it goes, you know. And he called him like, hey, hold. Like, but it was just bro, funny. You know what I'm saying? Was like, so funny. like, we just had a good time. But anyways, learning, like, like learning how to, I'm, for me, just getting a behind the scenes look at, you know what I'm saying? Like the hard work. Yeah. That it takes the, techni- just, the technicality. You know what I'm saying? Bro, and that's, like, 
even before that, I had always, you know, treated people right on set. I don't yeah. care if you're a PA. I don't care if you're, if you, whatever. It's like, but now it's like I show super love, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. To like gaffers. Now that you're in that or spot. Or to grips or anybody helping, bro. It's mm -hmm. like, I, you know what I'm saying? Everybody like on my sets, like if you've worked with me or you're around the set or you're on it, it's like, it's nothing but love because yeah. I, I don't, I don't down talk anybody. I don't treat nobody, you yeah. know, you know, the last person, even though there's a hierarchy and just like giving orders and having to do stuff, it's like everybody's equally value in my eyes. Bro, that's a hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? That is but there's, that's not that's not normal in this industry. You know what I'm saying? Because when that does happen and the producer sees that or director, they're always like, man, like, yo, like your whole crew and the way you it's just like so different, you know? And then it's so it's like because we actually we we work together. Yeah, we don't yeah. we don't yeah. work as if there's there's a chain of command. Like I the, just like this past uh like this Advent Hell shoot that I was that I was a part of, it was very it, it for some reason it felt like my first time coordinating again mm -hmm. because there was so many moving parts. But like having to get my whole PA team and it's and like I got Alex on there, Devin, mm -hmm. uh, Adriana, um, um, Sebastian was on there too as well. Yeah. Uh, but like I would always, no matter what, if I see my like even though like there wasn't always lots for them to do. Or even they were doing just the smallest thing, you always just walk by, like, hey, bro, I appreciate you. Mm -hmm. Hey, yeah, bro, yeah, yeah. I hope you sure. know I love you. Hey, bro, yeah. thank you so much for doing yeah. that. You're locking up the door. I know you're not doing much, but thank you for doing that. I appreciate yeah. Like, if you show people appreciation, that goes all the way up, because I'll do it all the way up to the director and the producer and yeah. all that, and they feel that energy. Yeah, yeah. no, and, it definitely sets the tone, bro. definitely like, sets yeah. the tone. And, and, and that's something I learned when I was um, in Topeka working on this at this small agency. I was, you know, just... You know, we small crew, maybe, you know, one person helping or whatever, a lot of yeah. one man man stuff. But it's like when I would ask somebody to do something, I just noticed myself like it sounded like I was giving orders and I hated that. Hate that you shit. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's like boy. I had time to like, you know, in, in house to like kind of figure out how to talk to people mm -hmm. in a way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But but even like I like even the I don't know what I was working on, but I'm like handing out waters. You know right. what I'm saying? As the DP. Right. I'm like, bro, right. like, you know what I'm saying? Just because like I, I don't think more than myself. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. I don't think yeah. about myself think, more than, you know what I'm saying, than I ought to, or I try not to. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, but that sets the tone, bro. It's like when it's like servant leadership. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know 100%. what I mean? A hundred percent. Like, and really everyone is really important, bro. Because if you take out a PA, you take out bro. a grip or AC, like exactly. the production is like in shambles. Exactly, like, bro. We're scrambling. And, and everyone. I, I know that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I consciously, without this piece, this person, like, this cannot happen. Yeah. So I'm super appreciative. Yes, bro. But it's weird to me that some directors and DPs, you know, don't see that or nope. don't, or they, they see that, they see it, but they, 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 the way they rock is just not a good vibe. You know what see, I'm saying? Nah, it's like, I, it, and it's normal in this industry to, that the DP or somebody is like, Kind of a douchebag, yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? The and, that's, and that's weird. That that's I've weird. Met, I've encountered a, little, a handful of those. It's, it's just it's time. super weird that it's like just you know me being myself, and when we're on set and we're, we're working, it's like just us being ourselves is like commendable. Yeah, you know what I mean. But you know what I'm saying. But also it gives us opportunity to like change the way you know what I'm saying things and that, happen. It's and, really learned behavior, bro. So like, because I used to, I remember I worked with like a director slash DP one time on set, and I was just a PA, and I was like, bro, like. Cause usually director and DPs are pretty tight. Like they, especially if it's a bigger budget, like right. they got hired like Together. by the exactly. agency. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's why you know, my 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 bloodline is directors. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's like you have to. But anyways, exactly. Yeah. But like they kind of were like, we're good regardless. Like we're like the hierarchy, the exactly. top. So like right. we can kind of do whatever we want. Mm -hmm. And to a certain extent, that's true. But like. When they were being douchebags, or like kind of treating people in a way yep. that I wouldn't treat someone, yep. I'm like, this must be learned behavior. And yep. I really, really learned it. Mm -hmm. Or like kind of peeped it when I was yeah, like, it's acceptable. You I've seen saying? DPs mm -hmm. even wear the same outfits, exactly, mm -hmm. yeah, and directors yeah. wear the same outfits. Know, yeah, yeah. It's like why, like why does every DP wear the <laughs> yeah. same hat yeah, or yeah. wear the same flannel? <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, yeah. so I'm thinking, I'm like, bro, like this has to be learned behavior. Like they, when they were coming up, they saw a DP they admired or a director they admired treat people the same way yep. and then they did that to their crew because they're like oh this is what i got to do right. to be in so this be, role yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and so you I, don't have to it's not really you know what i'm saying and here and go ahead and finish what you're saying well no i, I mean like and it's just like that's the cool thing about us mm -hmm. and more of like being the new wave is because we're able to jump a lot faster than maybe the previous generation as far as like the hierarchy yeah. like you know what i'm saying like we're able to pa for maybe a year or not pa at all mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and really jump the ladder when like 
the people who are older than us, they had to work as PAs for years, get mm-hmm. treated like crap for years. Right. Exactly, you know? bro. Yeah. And that and then they see that and then it's like, Oh, it's my turn to do that. Or it's like, Oh, this is how it goes. Yeah. And maybe man. it's just you know what I mean? And yeah. there's a lot of people out there like that right now. Yeah. And, and that and that that truly just irritates me. It's weird, bro, that we're in an industry that is that's normal. You know what I'm and, saying? Exactly. And, like and, and, but that's why for me, you know what I'm saying, it's important, bro, that I rock with with similar people like myself. Yeah. I'm keep, gonna say keep that bro, circle. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. Cause I don't really trust a lot of people. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And like even in, in, in conflict, like I know how you're gonna react. I know how you're gonna react. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We yeah. we're, we we grew up in the same environment. Mm-hmm. So it's like I really do like you know what I'm saying? Like I I'm I'm we keep it in the circle. Exactly. Right? You, you keep- know what I'm saying? Because cause we have a respect for each other. We I I would never, you know what I'm saying, like, or even have anybody around me that's gonna like pop off mm-hmm. to you. In a disrespectful way, right. and that's just not happening. Exactly, you know what I'm saying. And that's yeah. why, like, ever since two day, three, three days ago, I was, I was, I was beside myself when you told me what the fuck was up, and I was just like, I would never, like, I would have never put you in that position if I knew that that's what you were gonna have to experience with that. Yeah. So, like, I apologize for that, but at the same time, that's why people don't, you know, hire people back. Because, yeah, and that's why people stop getting calls and, because you start acting a certain way, and we are very liberated. In, in industry at the same time but there's yeah. so much this goes back to what mm. we were saying earlier there's yeah. so much gatekeeping yeah, yeah. bro and there's yeah. so much uh man I, I never worked with you before so i'm not even gonna trust you yeah, exactly. with putting a hi-hat back yeah. together like right. like bro yeah. like i i know yeah. how to do that and, he, and yeah. i and i even even i would know how to do that so like for you to sit here and, and make me feel bad in front of an entire crew just yeah. because i'm right. not doing something to your standard right. like that's fucked up oh yeah man. like i i and it's just really like that. And it's also the experience. It's like, well, yeah. I've been doing this for years, for decades. Yeah. Like, I can tell you what to do and like, you should just listen. And it's like, bro, like, I respect that. Like, I get like, you you know, people, I respect people's time that they put in, mm-hmm. get, like, you know, but I'm just like, at the same time, like that, you're not a good leader just because you have a lot of experience. Like, right. You really exactly. have to know how to trust people. You really know how to, have to know how to like delegate and explain. So like, that's kind of what I learned is like, whenever I move up, like I need to make sure I trust my people that are under me. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, give them the trust. Kind of what you did with mm-hmm. me, too. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, I'm learning this, too. So, I mean, even though that shoot was weird, it taught me what I don't want other mm-hmm. like yeah. people to feel like whenever I bring them on or under me. You know? I've, and I bring that to a lot of our sets when, like, because I, I see that and I'm like, I'm not doing that. I'm yeah. not going down that road. Like, exactly. We're, we're we're going to have the set that everybody wants to be on. Everybody wants to be a part of it. And, that, and if we have to, you know, honestly, and this might sound like selfish of me to do, but it's like if I have to keep it within our circle, mm-hmm. then I will. If we if there's no reason to bring out bring somebody in from the outside who's just gonna disrupt everything, there's no point to. Right. Yeah. And, and, and and even on this conversation, it's like uh, if I say this all the time, bro. When I talk, to, you know, we even talked about it. We talk about it all the time in this industry. If you just do good work, whatever it is, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, sound, AC, DP, whatever, mm-hmm. producing, you do good work and you're a good person. You're going to get called back. Yes, you're going yeah. to get work. Hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? It's like all you have to do is be a good person. Be nice. Yeah, it's that simple, you know bro. It's, you know, it's like that's just that has to be said. Treat us. So you know what I'm saying? Treat others the way you. But it's like treat others the way you want to be treated. No, like, seriously, that, bro. That yeah. like that. I I hold that to the because um because I feel bad for a lot of people who who don't work in our industry who are still like working the grind nine mm-hmm. to five who are still getting yelled at by. A, a floor supervisor because they're getting yelled at by their general manager because they're getting yelled at by their H- whoever else mm-hmm. and it's like i don't have to deal with that i'm a freelancer now right, like right. sure i, I got to deal with you know maybe my production supervisor or maybe a production manager or a mm-hmm. producer but like i don't have to deal with them for maybe a, a week yeah at yeah. that and you get to yeah. choose whether you and want I to, get do to it choose and, whether i want to do it and i'll I'm just a quick story and we kind of like i don't want to harp on the negative you know what i'm saying it's okay right. it's, but it's but beautiful. like we went to we had a shoot in Chicago. Yeah, and it was just me and him, and um, I I called Isai. I'm like, bro, I already know that you know what I'm saying it's about to be bad vibes. <laughs> Damn, I, I need yeah. you, bro, to mellow me out. So I don't get oh, stressed yeah. out. I don't get angry. But for some reason, bro, this 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 so, shoot right here is bugging me. Mm-hmm. It smells uh, uh 
Uh, he's, like, he's like, all right, bro, I got you. You know what I'm saying? We get to the shoot, and it's exactly, it's a cluster, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like 10 things trying to happen all at once. And I'm over here, like, trying to direct and DP the most important part. But, you know, and, and there's multiple things happening in the same Airbnb, yeah. which is small. And I'm like, and I already told him it's not going to work. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But, but anyways, like, we get to, like, day two, and it's like we get, like, a five-minute lunch. We get, we sit down, bro, and it's like we're eating. Yeah. Are you guys ready? And, and it's like 7 o'clock. At night, after like a, you know what I'm saying, like a long day, and I'm nah, like, bro. I said that, and and I told like the producer that night, like we stepped outside, I'm like, this is the last time, like, you know, it's good money, you know what I'm saying, the rate's full, but just that doesn't mean you can treat me yeah. and treat Isai, my boy, my guy that I brought in here, my crew, like you want anything you want, you know what I'm saying, and one of the producers was really cool, the other producer, I had to tell the producer that we was contacting with, like just about overtime and stuff like that, like, right. like you know, this is my last shoot. You know what I'm saying? Like, and we, they had another four day shoot lined up. It would have been good, really great money. Right. But just by principle, yeah, I just no, don't rock like that. No, you know what I'm saying? If you're treating that. people wrong, like I'm, I'm not gonna lend my services to you. I'm not gonna. I, it's the stress is not worth it. It's not. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And, and and so, so yeah, like what you were saying, bro. You get to choose. You know what I'm saying? It's a blessing. You get to choose. You know who you want to work with, and you know what I'm saying because it's yeah. like if it's not worth it, I'm not gonna do it. It's not exactly. coming back. Not, not coming. Not, doing again. not coming back. I think there's there's two companies in town that I won't work for simply because yeah. I don't like the way they just, they run their, they run their operation. So and, it's and like, for me, bro, it's like, I know that like, it's going to come back somehow, like as far as like just off integrity, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Just off like, you know, right. off principle. I know that God is going to bless me, you know, uh, down the road. You know what I'm saying? I don't need that. A1. You know what I'm saying? 100%. I'm not like hinged upon anybody or anyone. Like mm-hmm. I know 100%. that I'm, I'm, I'm going to be good. All you know right, what I'm saying? Right, so that's right. another one where, like, you know, where that's another just aspect of like where I, my faith has allowed me to move in these spaces and be confident because I know that, like, you know, I know who has me. Right. Yeah. You know and, what I'm saying? And that's right. one thing I have. I have Big been facts. lately. I have I've been a lot more spiritual lately in, in the last year, actually, because I I was very, very depressed um, last year leading up until uh until I got honestly, it was like right around the time I got Vinny, bro, is when my when my depression kind of like stopped mm. uh, back in May. <laughs> but it was just the idea of like, I don't know where I'm going. Mm-hmm. I don't know what I'm oh, doing. Oh yeah, bro, that's a whole other. Yeah. And 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 like you and you can relate bro. to this because it's like I got kids I have to worry about mm-hmm. now. Like, oh shit, we're actually buying a house. Oh, I got to worry about this bro. now. Yeah. And so why? And I tell my wife, I tell my fiance this all the time. It's like, why work with people? who make you feel like shit mm-hmm, mm-hmm. there's yeah, no bro. point like yeah. and, and i see i her, hate that feeling i hate bro. that fi- it's the worst. I, it's I just hate- like you don't want to talk or ask questions or move it's like i don't even want to be in this space exactly and, mm-hmm. and, you know what i'm saying and it sucks that this is an industry that that is sometimes the norm but that's why it's so important to have that circle you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying or have those people that you trust or or whatever you know what i'm saying and rocking with the same you know people same. and it's so important because like you got to protect that. You got to protect your mentals. Exactly. That's yeah. what uh, like, Marshawn Lynch, protect your protect mentals. Your mentals. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out Marshawn Lynch. Shout Hopefully Marshawn I can get him on set. On, on this. Like, I don't know, but hey, if I get Skittles to sponsor us, you definitely coming out. Yeah. Um, but no, man, like I, I really do. I really do um, think that we, we as the new generation, we definitely got to change that, that whole aspect of like not trusting the younger generation blow us. Like Charles, for instance, he has been grinding his ass off since I've met this kid. Yeah. He, he, it started off him being an extra in my thesis, and now he is he has done tremendous things, and he's he's shooting his thesis these last two weeks, and it's a concept that, I mean, hasn't been done at Mo West for sure. Like, he's yeah. going to set the bar a yeah, whole yeah, different yeah. standard after this shit's over with. And just watching, and he and he even knows, because I got to check him sometimes, because he'll, he'll call me stressed out, upset, such and such not doing this. This such not doing. I'm like, hey, you don't need that. Like, there's no reason to right. feel this way right now, exactly. bro. You are in control of what you want. If this 100%. is your project, control it the way you want it to. If people can't get in line, move on from them, bro. It's that simple. Yeah. And and he's starting to realize that now because I like he was so high strung. Remember on colors, bro. Oh, yeah. it's like Charles almost got shot, bro, because he was just doing too much. You don't remember that. <laughs> Remember the remember the the last day, and we were trying to put the bag back on the light. Oh, and the cop came up, and Charles was like, "Oh, I got the paperwork," and started running oh, towards the cop, bro. And the cop was like, "Freeze, get yeah. down!" I was like, "Ah, oh, hell, Charles about to get what, shot." Is Charles white or is no? Charles he's black, black bro. Oh, That's the whole dang. thing, man. And like, I was I like, did "Not, bro." I was too busy getting the. Oh yeah, you was in the air. 
<laughs> he was on the ladder. Cause bro, this <laughs> man literally, like, I was like, Jarrell, I will only do this for you and you only, bro. <laughs> we were on a hill on top, and then we had to this black ladder. out this street light. The, it was attached oh, to the building. Man. And it was oh, no. attached to the building. Bro, it was. But I couldn't put the ladder next to the building because there was the air conditioners. Right. So I had to, like, Jimmy, like, rig it, like, right next to it. I had to go up like the full length of the ladder, Bro. and I had to tape the black yeah, the black yeah. bag over it. Because <laughs> Ben Ben did it. Shout out to Ben, my uh, graffiti artist on colors. I'm sorry, y'all, that still has not been released. We're still working on that. But he he climbed that ladder day one. Is he the one that put it on? Yeah, he's the one who did it. He was like, oh, I've done this all the time. Uh, uh, he ain't me. He ain't was, me. So I'm I was like, like he's a painter. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's, he's a, yeah, I mean, he's yeah. used to doing that stuff. Like, right? He gets paid to do graffiti, like right. bro. And, and he shout out to him because he he taught me at that moment to always give back because he only charged me two hundred bucks for that wall. That's crazy. And that dope, that man. was like a twenty twenty five thirty foot wall, bro. Yeah. Maybe even longer than it that because I know wall. it was it was a huge wall that he he put this nice ass lion. It was beautiful. Graffiti, like, oh my God, it was so yeah. beautiful. We'll probably we'll try to put a screenshot of it in here, even though we got we still got the footage. So we'll probably put a screenshot on this episode. But um, but he was like, Hey man, I don't I just need the cost of paint and some gas. And I was like, it's, it's he was like, if you can give me two hundred bucks, that's dope. No, man. actually it was a hundred. I gave him the extra mm-hmm. hundred. Yeah. Because like I know that cans are expensive as mm-hmm. fuck. And yeah. you went through a lot of cans painting this more than what you're saying, but yeah. like he was like, just pay it forward, bro. And that's what I've been doing oh, ever dope. since then. That's dope. Yeah, just, yeah. just pay it forward, cause and that's why I give Cooper, like Charles, the chance. Like, hey man, show your worth on this project. PA yeah. for me and show your worth and start getting in there. And he did. That's why I give Cooper the chance. That's why I give all my younglings the chance to like younglings. Is that a word? Younglings. I'm younglings. I'm, I'm oh, making it a word. A, a Urban Dictionary. Yeah. If you can hear this, young ones, <laughs> young, young niggas. Yo, shout, shout out to Curtis too on that shoot because hey, yeah, you to- asked him first and he said, hell no. Nah. Oh. And then I was like, dang, I got to do it now. <laughs> Wait, ask him for do what? I was the first AC Curtis as a DP. <laughs> yeah. And, oh, yeah. And, he, and you asked him first. He was like, nah. <laughs> and then Joe looked at me and I was like, bro, I really got to climb this ladder. <laughs> I was like, dang. Hey, Kurt, and bro, that project was so much fun. I can't wait. Till we sh- I can't wait till we show that project. All right. So here, I'm, we're going to start a new segment part of this. Hold on, hold on. Before you move on, bro. Yeah. You talked about, uh, I wanted to hit on, for oh, real, okay, okay. the depression. Oh yeah, because, yeah. I did. Bro, I did uh, skip over that a little bit. Yeah, you yeah. did, bro. And it's important because, because I want people to know, bro. Anybody who watches this, I don't care if we get three views. If mm-hmm. one of those person has ever struggled or or does that that do this, you know what I'm saying? That are freelancing mm-hmm. or whatever. Because, bro, like that is real. That is so. I'm, I was real. in a state where, like, for real, like my first, I started freelancing like October 2018. It like I went like I maybe like made three hundred dollars my first month. You know what I'm saying? I made I didn't have a shoot like for real for real, until like January. Like, and then I went like two, three months without like booking anything. And this was like right before I hopped on set of you shoot videos. Okay. And then right before I started uh the Kelvin Taylor project. Like yeah. because I had decided like I'm gonna start doing. And yeah. I started my YouTube and everything from that. Right. Like because I was in this state of just like, bro, I'm about to sell my camera. I invested in a camera. So I'm in debt. Damn, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Like no. max out my credit card, borrow some money. You know, I'm in bro. debt, bro, and nothing's coming in. I'm like, dang, bro, because yeah. the, the the camera that I bought, I, this project that I thought I was gonna use for this camera, I'm like, I got this project in line, got two like two three videos, it's gonna pay off this camera. It just dropped, so I'm yeah. like, bro, like I'm on the hook for like so much. Yeah. I got kids, you know what I'm saying, and I'm like, bro, like literally like battling anxiety, yeah, bro, and depression. Bro. I told my wife, I'm got, I gotta sell my camera. Like I told her from the get, I got a year. Well, if I, if it doesn't pop off in a year, then I I will take my wounds like a man and I'll, I'll get a job. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? If I'm not good at this, like as far as the business side, mm-hmm. I knew like uh, the the video side unlocked. You know what I'm saying? But the business side, anyways, bro, struggling with depression, bro. It, yeah, it's, you know what I'm saying? It's, real, it's, it's normal, bro. And, you know what I mean? And you gotta. That's why it's so important to to have a loved one who supports you unconditionally 100 percent. like yeah, i don't know even, how many even a circle though even like a, even the circle system, yeah like, people that you, you can need talk to, tons yeah. of times where i've called him and he he he's just checked on me mentally because he he knew i was battling it hard and yeah. he, he would start asking me like bro how are you mentally right now and like jj started asking me too because i guess every it, it started to bleed mm-hmm. out a little bit that mm-hmm. i was i was truly like struggling mm-hmm. with the fact and i and i think it was just after coming off my case after you know finishing school in debt, I don't know what the fuck I'm gonna do. Home mm-hmm. Depot is not yeah, yeah, that, not it. It's just bro, it's brutal when you first start brutal. out, bro. You know what I'm brutal, saying? Bro. Like I'm in year three. You you know what I'm saying, bro? First of all, like 
I'm proud of you, bro. Because oh, when we met, you, like literally, I was just starting. Didn't have mm-hmm. no job. Like I was able to work a whole week for free. Cause I didn't have nothing going Bro, on. Bro, I'm yeah. mad that they didn't pay you for that. <laughs> Everybody hey. should have got hey. paid for that. Bro. Hey, but bro, like we were like, you know what I'm saying? We talked. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We all talked. It was like we were just like was just you know rapping. Bro, Adrian gave me an, uh, some fruit. It was because he he would bring the fruit to say. Yeah, bro, I had fruit. I had like, protein bars. You got, extra, you got bananas, an extra bro. apple in there, bro. <laughs> I, I got water you, bro. in my book bag, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's book bag. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, bro, like to see, you know what I'm saying? Where we was at? See where you was at? Like, man, I'm trying to be in this lane, and you're doing it, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate that. So bro. shout out to my man, Jarrell. I appreciate that, bro. You know what I'm saying? It, you're doing it, it. It was hard because it's one thing to like, I, and I and I take nothing away from either of you on on in, in anybody in the technical world because I didn't know what my lane was mm-hmm. in school until I produced um, um, my buddy Steve Catron's um, thesis film, and even then I still didn't know so like when it comes to like the camera work i know what you guys have that shit on lock like learning that and understanding that like of course you're gonna get hired and as soon as you put that big project out that's gonna that's gonna showcase what you've learned and what you've done like mm-hmm. especially people are gonna hire you but when you're like a coordinator mm-hmm. a it's producer yeah, yeah, yeah. Production behind, man, the scenes. behind the mm-hmm. scenes like it's so hard and so stressful like i said like i was saying on this one job uh that i was on this week it it felt like I was coordinating for the first time again because we're going through rap and it's like, I'm, I'm not there yet. I'm not, I didn't know what P, I like. I haven't worked with POs. I haven't worked with all the back end rap stuff. So it's like trying to catch up and learn all that. And it's so mentally draining because you feel useless mm-hmm. because yeah, you're, yeah, yeah. you have somebody ahead of you doing all the work mm-hmm. and they're like, Hey, I need, how come you haven't done this yet? Hey, have you reached yeah. out to this person yet? Hey, I'm like, Oh, you need me to do that. Okay. I'll, I'll hop on this. But Hey, have you started this yet? So it's like so much small little tedious work right. that it just compresses you and you feel so useless and powerless. And like, yeah. like all day to day, bro, I was just staring at my laptop so mad at myself because I was like, I cannot believe like I feel like this right now. And I even call yeah. uh cousin I call cousin Joe. Shout out to cousin Joe too. He said he's gonna come on set on come on this one yeah, time. Yeah, we gotta bring him on. But, uh, I met him on YouTube. Yeah, you, I'm telling you, bro. Bro, everybody was on yeah. USV low everybody, key. Yeah, yeah. Uh, except yeah, except you. <laughs> I try I think I tried to get you on that though. <laughs> you didn't have enough melody, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I was I wasn't tan enough. I don't know Not about that, bro. Say, but like but, uh, like, but no, nah, it it was trying trying to and like that's why I'm glad I do have the John Davises, the yeah. the Johnny Eastlands, and 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 Carrie Rounds. Like those those guys have truly and Kyle Kimker as well. Like those guys truly kept me grounded because I know I can go to them and ask them questions. And they even tell me like it doesn't like no there's no stupid question when it comes to this back end shit like because yeah, yeah, every exactly. company is different yeah you're not like don't t- act like you know what you're talking about exactly you look stupid exactly uh-huh. don't don't do that at all and I and and on this project it's not even I was trying to know what I was talking about but I I thought like uh, if she wants me to rap I know exactly how to rap I know exactly who to contact here are my vendors I just got to make sure I have all this but there was so much more than that and that's why it started making me feel useless like I wasn't really knowing I like. It had me questioning, bro. Yeah, and I, am I actually a good coordinator? <laughs> yeah. Am I actually a good producer? Like, am I better? But then, like, you, me, you, and me got to talking earlier, mm-hmm. and you kind of like they said, "Me, you, and me." That's my bad. Go you ahead. and me got to talking. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> that me, you, and me <laughs> <laughs> got to talking earlier, and you kind of put me back in my lane. I appreciate you for that, and that's why your family because you were like, bro, it's so it, it's easier on our sets because we know how to manage it. We know who's who is in who what we need. So like, that's why like. The commercial stuff, I love it so much. But you remember the waste management dude yeah. that, we, that we met? And he was like, commercials was like the crack game. Yeah. Because that, that. that money comes fast, yeah, yeah, boy. Yeah. He's like, the moves is like the, the weed game because that's long money. That's the long roll. Mm-hmm. And in all honesty, yeah. bro, I prefer that long game any <laughs> day, man. Like, I, I, I appreciate everybody who has hired me for commercial work and all that. Mm-hmm. But I don't want that stress. Trying to get in that crack game, bro. Yeah, yeah I, I don't want to be on. I, you said you want that crack game? I'm trying to. You, you, wait, 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 I mean, hey, bro. Like, if you want that so crack game. Get out of context. Like, look, look. For a, and that's the thing, though. For, hey, we for, get in there, bro. For a deep. And, we and, get in we there. are we really just, in hey, there. We just posted our first commercial today. Cinematographer Adrian Harrell wants it in the crack game. <laughs> bro, hey, we just posted our first commercial today, bro. Yeah, but, we, hey, you know what I'm saying? We, 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 hey, but low key, though, like, I I truly. and I And I still would do. I still. I don't not dislike commercials it's just a different environment than what i was taught in because we were yeah. taught we were taught to make indie movies in college yeah we weren't taught like how you did documentary and and um 
and your business feeling like yeah. that has helped. Like Jada, I, I am Jada. You probably took everything you learned in college exactly, and, and applied it to yeah, that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's like every project that you do, every passion project, it's like the years and years and years poured into that. And then you, once you pass that, it's like, okay, the years after that, into that one project. You know mm-hmm, what I'm saying? So I feel mm-hmm. like the years and years and years go into those projects. Exactly. But also like the coordinator role and just like the back end stuff is something that's like tapping in way more than just like the creative of yeah. filmmaking. It's like pretty much like accounting. It's, yeah. It's, it's knowing how to manage yeah. other people. It's knowing how to that's do receipts. Like would, that's yeah. literally a whole nother major. Like yeah. it's not and even filmmaking. That's why I needed to work with myself. Cause I hated the small task. I couldn't do your job. bro. I yeah. hate so the small, hard. even now if I have like, you know, a job where like I have to send in timesheet and stuff, I'm like, I'm late at doing it and stuff. I'm the worst, bro, because it just gives me stress. I like just want to do creative, and I'm the person who has to send the emails know, yeah, to yeah, people. Yeah. They like, hey, had man, to send me like three emails. I'm like, dang, let me get this done. Like, yeah. and bro, oh my god, I hate trying to fetch invoices, man. No, that, I that's hate the, being that guy too. <laughs> and, yeah. and I. I I was that guy when being a PA because I I would get so busy. Like when when I was lucky and I started getting more and more busier, I was like late on my. I'm that guy right now. I need an invoice. Like how many invoices are you behind? Probably like ten. Bro, who I you need get paid? Up, bro, I need this right after this podcast. <laughs> I need to invoice bro. you. I need to invoice. <laughs> I need to invoice a lot of people. <laughs> I need to send that invoice too. Oh, we, one, bro. we both behind. Hey, I'm, well, so I'm just weak. one, bro. Just one. And, you know what I'm saying? I'm so weak. Like I just sent my vault. I just sent my Taco Bell invoice like three days ago, bro. bro and that I, was at the top of the month. It's a blessing. That we have invoices to send, bro. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Amen I'm telling you, I'm telling you, bro. Because I, ne- I ne- like one of the things I like. I never want people to think that, like, you know, what I'm saying, like, even where I'm at now yeah. is like, oh, it's like, you know, it's like, bro, I'm grateful. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm just grateful that, uh, like, every project and, and and job that I get, bro, it's like the first. Yeah. Because, like, like I was saying, there are times where, like, bro, I didn't, I didn't have nothing. nothing. I didn't know anybody. Yeah. I didn't, you know, no, no connections, no producer, no direct. And so now where I'm at a spot where like, you know, just recent, like last year or like, you know, almost a year now, like I, I told my wife, like, you can quit your, your daycare business. She didn't like it. I'm like, we're in a spot where like, money's we're like, good. Like, we're we're good. Finally quit. She held me down until my business, until I actually, you know, like could build up like right. connections and stuff where like bro. I'm having shoots on a regular. Right. And then I look one day, I'm like, babe, like you can, you can quit. You know what I'm saying? And that right there, bro, was like, a like. The it's best, it's, bro, it's like you know what I'm saying. It's like that's success that's such for me. That's a good ass feeling, that bro. Is. That is success. I don't care about anything else. Whatever you know what I'm saying. It's like, bro, like providing and being able to like yeah. you know like not have to worry, not have to worry. You know what I mean? Because that's where also this is the that. first year I've had that. Yeah. Like the last two years of trying to do freelance, bro. Like Struggle I was bus. broke yeah. as heck, and yeah. like it's always that insecurity of like, dang, like do I have to get a job? Like right. can I really do this? Yeah. And it's like. I'm single. I don't have that many expenses. Mm-hmm. Like, and I still can't do it. Yeah. And it's like, can I do it once I have kids, have a house, have yeah. more more payments? Yeah, yeah. What do you mean so, you single? Ooh, I'm telling Danielle. I mean, like, um, <laughs> the tax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, single, and, and the good thing about it is like, um, um, what's it gonna say? What's the last thing you just said? Taxes. Well, we'll talk about like being good this year. Like this year is the first year where it's like, damn, like, I can have that breather of like, okay, like I can like really do this. You know, like I'm we, not worried about. Like we ordered the Komodo this year. Like yeah. that's a huge, that's, bro, that's, that's a huge congrats. ass step. Yeah, congrats. that's, that's a huge bro. ass step. Like congrats. it's crazy to think that like I remember when you bought when you bought the GH and we yeah. were like, bro, we, all right, we got this camera. Yeah. This is dope as fuck. And then we bought the pocket right. and yeah. I was like, oh shit, we on a whole nother yeah, level. Yeah, and yeah. now <laughs> we're about to be on a whole new level. Yeah, yeah. So it's like I can we I see us building. And I was we were talking about money earlier today on the phone. I was like, bro. I cleared last last month, same as this month bro, now because of just this last three jobs. Feeling, bro, I'm still yes. trying to think about what I had to say, but uh, I lost it. Well, it's also like, because then I was talking to someone about just like leveling up as far as like being your own mm-hmm. boss, like boss, right? Yeah. It's like, like this year, one of my personal, like, I guess like insecurities or like vices or kind of like that voice in the back of my head mm-hmm. is like, you know, now I went from being, okay, can I even make enough money to survive? It's like, okay, I mm-hmm. did it this month, but oh, if I, I can't do it next right. month, but then you do the next month, you're like, okay, these last few months were good, mm-hmm. but what if like the fall is bad? Mm-hmm. So like I had to like tell myself, like, no, like yeah. you're working, you know, mm-hmm. you're getting blessings, God's providing, like yeah. just keep doing this. Mm-hmm. Like, don't think about when it's gone. Like reinvest, right. figure mm-hmm. out how to use what yeah. you have now to keep yeah, yeah. getting b- bigger yeah, and bigger. Good. Yeah. yeah. And, so like you get to a point where it's like encouraging, bro, like, cause cause I like I like to encourage, 
I get hit up on Instagram, like you know what I'm saying, like young dudes and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. That was like, man, you know, just ask questions and stuff hey, like that. Hey, that's the love, you know. Right but there. it's like I should have take too call back because it's our next, it's our next guest. Oh, uh, <laughs> 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 sorry, sorry, I'm like. And so, uh, dang, middle of the podcast, dang, middle I'm of the podcast, I'm, I'm, and he I'm was actually, I'm with it. He's I'm about to go in. I have value, but he's anyway, about I'm to go in. I'm listening. Let me, let me tell you. I think you he's this. downstairs why, but oh. I always, I, I'm, I'm like really big on like um, trying to show, trying to reply and show love to yeah. people back, and that's why I started YouTube, and I have fell off because it's just, it's just so hard to be consistent on YouTube. God, so bro, that people, you know, what I'm saying, so I can get back is. my experiences or whatever, and then like my journey, like I'm like, you know, not where I want to be. But anyways. You get to a point where it's like, I want to encourage a young young dudes just starting out. Is that like you you get to a point if you're grinding and you know what you're doing, you know you're creative, like you have skill, like you just keep going because you get to a point where it's like the only way to stop it is to to hop off the train. Yeah. yeah. Now it's like now it's like the only way to stop it is literally uh-huh. just to go just get off the grid. Yeah. So you're not 100%. emailing nobody back. You're not. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Or or to go get a job. If I was to go get a job. Right now, like I would like, you know how much money I would lose? Oh so God, much. yes. You know what I'm saying? Oh, God. You know, so it's like now it's like, and it's a blessing. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's such a blessing, bro. To where like I literally couldn't imagine this. You know what I'm saying? No. Two and a half years ago. Two yeah. exactly. And not not that like like I want to say like I don't ever want to feel like or make it seem like I'm I'm where I want to be or like I I have it all together or like right. financial I'm good. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, like yeah, like the Lord has blessed. Yeah. To where, like I said, my wife doesn't have to work. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, like shout out, we just bought a home, our first home. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I know, like, I know that feeling, man. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, guys. it's crazy. You know what I'm saying? As a freelancer, I never ever thought that would happen. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So Bro. it's like, and they let you? Would they? Did they put you on it? Did they? Were they? Were they? Were they, were they okay with you being on the on the paperwork? Bro, it's me. It's bro. bro it's, they wouldn't let me, and I, I was I was low key oh, a little salty bro, about it. it. You know what I'm it's hard as a freelancer. It's so hard. That's what I'm saying. We had a, we had a good um like a you know a good loan officer and stuff that like you know it was just it was all me. Oh uh, hell yeah! See, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They they use they use Virginia's credentials because they were like, well, he hasn't been working long enough, but I just cleared the year before, so I'm like. I mean, I'm making. But next the same year they're gonna be like, hold on. Oh shit! <laughs> new mail, like, like hey, we put a whole new tax yeah, bracket. Yeah. But it, you know, just to just to like finalize it, I was just saying like, it's you know, keep going. Like anybody watching this, you know what I'm saying? Like, because yeah. I was, I was, we all have been there. Like oh, literally, yeah. I was like, a, like about to sell my camera. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Then I made a decision. I talked to one of my best friends, um, my guy Courtney, um, one of my best friends, and he and like. Like at the moment where I needed him, man, like uh, he's my brother in Christ, and he just always he's just an encouraging dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like he, they came down and visited us, and it was like January. You know, January is like the worst. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm like, bro, like no work. Is I ain't happening. done nothing. I ain't get, he's like, and he was just like, bro, just 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 start doing, just start doing stuff. Just start. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I had stuff planned out. I was showing them like my notes and stuff of what I had planned, like this YouTube thing going. Just do it, you know. So, so like that, like next week I started shooting YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. I started um, like the MMA seller. Like I started like reaching out to him about that. Yeah. Um, I hop. I was just hopping on. I was networking, like going to networking events as a. You know what I'm saying? Bro. Like I don't need to, but I'm like I don't know anybody. Maybe this I, is I the need, way. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but to to be there and then to like now it's like okay, like we on a come up. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. We're not where we're gonna be. You know what I'm saying. But it's like, man, like the Lord is definitely a hundred percent blessed. our businesses, and I pray when I work with people, bro. I pray, I pray for them. Like even with this a new person that. or friends, whatever. It's like, man, I pray that the Lord blesses their business. Yes. you know what I'm saying because because it's not. You know what I'm saying. Like this is a. It's not for everybody. No, it's not. not. You know I've I mean? seen. A, I've seen a lot of people. It's it's crazy how all the people we went to school, I think about the people we went to school with and, and the, the drive that they had while we were in school. And then, you know, it gets to like real world time and now people are kind of shook. Like, how, how do I really get into this it's, industry? It's, mm-hmm. it's a mental I'm marathon, scared now. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, I need to get a job first and, and then I'll, I'll look how to get in. Like, I, it, it, I was day and night, bro. Me and James would talk. I was like, bro, when you coming back? You're only two hours late. When you moving back? When you moving back? When you moving back? Yeah. And he finally moves to Bruce Springs, and immediately, James, you're Boom. on set. <laughs> and yes. he's been getting and like yeah, yeah. And shout out to my homie James Terry. He just shout had, out to James. Just had my goddaughter Josephine. Congrats. He Congrats. she's amazing and beautiful. Um, but the fact that like he's been on um he was on the he's been on the show Daddy's Divas, and he's like, bro, like I've 
I've made money. Like me, right. I'm I'm happy. Like I can't believe I'm doing it. And yeah. then like he'll come. He was on Taco Beautiful, Bell for bro. two days. He he was, on, and I put him on here and there. And now he's he's about to start. Once he's back in, Scott and Troy and all of them want to hire him in the G and E world. So it's like, bro, and he doesn't want to do that, but he knows like if that's my end, that's what I have to do because I'm strong and big. Like yeah. then sure, that's what I'll do for he right is now. Strong and big. Yeah. So, but but it's it. It's never don't ever lose the drive. Yeah. If you are if you are in film school right now or if you are just starting picking up a camera and just starting to shoot YouTube videos right now, don't ever lose this drive because we need those we need people like you in this yes. industry. We definitely do. And you know what? If you don't have the drive, it's like it's time to pivot to something else. Yeah. Because that's the only thing that's gonna keep you going. A hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? Like I read a whole book on it, like how to how to quit. Yeah. How to uh-huh. it's like you're pivoting. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like you it may not be for you pivot to do something and, else and the big thing is it don't it's not necessarily a failure it is a pivot like yeah. people yeah, think yeah, oh sure, i yeah. failed like mm. it's a bad thing but it's like no like you're you're learning you're pivoting to something that's even better for you you know what mm-hmm. i'm saying but another thing on like just freelancing and being like your own business because that's really what we are as mm-hmm. freelancers is yeah i don't think we get enough credit either for being businessmen no, no you know what i'm saying we, like we really it's don't. like bro it's like it's a it's a hustle it's a hundred i learned the hustle but go ahead and, and it's a hundred percent hustle yeah. but like on top of that is that not that I want credit, but go ahead. <laughs> is that no? Give yourself credit, bro. <laughs> nah, nah. But uh, it's that mentality of like, yo, like, it, and you're not alone. Like, we all have dark times, and a lot of times, like, maybe you're not as lucky as what we have been to have a support system that really like reinforces, no, you mm-hmm. can do it. Right? Yeah, man. So like, just know, like, we all been there. If you want to oh, quit, man. if you haven't made any money this month or last month, and you're like, dang, like, maybe I shouldn't do this. If your family isn't supporting you, just know, like, we all have felt that way. But like. Like like Adrian said, the only way it's gonna really stop is if you hop off the train. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But if you keep doing it, it will happen. It yeah, will. Yeah. It low key yeah. will happen. Uh, I, w- I want to get into this real quick because it's. I just want to get into it. Hold on, before be- before you start, because I don't yeah. want to cut you off. Abraham is waiting for me in the lobby downstairs, bro. So I have why didn't to you go just get go him. get him then? Because the conversation was too juicy. Oh, I, I feel wanted. We're just gonna cut everything <laughs> on this episode. Everything he says is getting cut. cut no, out, I'm editing bro. it. So all y'all stuff is getting <laughs> cut, and I'm gonna crop it in just on me. <laughs> but no, I'll be right back. <laughs> bro, I can't stand you. Go somewhere. Bro, we, we just, hey, bring me something back. Bring me something to drink to nah, back. We're then. just gonna take over the show. Yeah, we about this it's, it's A1 Adrian. It's in the Jarrell A1, show. A1, Jarrell's in. This is the like, A1 and Jarrell show. I will bro. say this, bro. We're talking about failures. Failures, man. And, and my whole career as a freelancer started because I got fired. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. From a job, from the Cerner job I was telling you. Okay. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you had you know told me about that's, this. That's that's part of my journey, bro. And in in uh, being in that world, being hired, you know, as an employee, doing video work, and then now being on this side, you know what I'm saying? Like I've seen both sides. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like being like literally like that's that was like an ultimate failure. I felt like a, I felt a like true failure. I felt like I failed my family, bro. Yeah, I felt let's... my wife. You know what I'm saying? At that time, I couldn't just. It's like I took a day, bro, just to kind of I t- you know I said lick my wounds and just exactly. cry and just like really pray about what I was gonna do, but. The whole time I was like, I knew I wanted to start freelancing. So that was like God kicking me out the door, bro. And you know it, what I'm saying? And, and forcing me to do it. It's such a, it's such a motivation when, when I, when I, when I meet people who have gone through that, I, I hit rock bottom mm-hmm. because, because I, 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 I appreciate your struggle in a way. Cause I, I was there too. Like after, what was that? That was two, seven, 2017. Yeah, 2017 when I when when I took when I got my charge, mm-hmm. and um, I didn't know what the fuck was gonna happen. Like I, right. I, I yeah, was, yeah. it was my fourth felony. I was very confused. I was like, man, the four times the charm. They really about to throw the book in my ass. Mm-hmm. So they they locked me and my homie up for twenty for thirty days. And so after that thirty days, like after reflecting, like sure enough, mm-hmm. like you you do. Um, you, you when that first night in jail bro like like don't get me wrong i ain't, i ain't, i mean yeah i've been in these streets and i was in the streets <laughs> but bro jail ain't for me like i'm not i mean yeah i t- i took the i took the nap after my two days of, of stressed out i went ahead and just let it be for me but um but i, I was re- i was scared because my, my i didn't know where my homie was going after this i knew yeah. we were both going separate ways once yeah. this was over with like me and him didn't talk for a few months just because we just had to figure out what the fuck we were doing mm. and going back to cheddar's then getting a job at home depot and still just like man i'm i'm not even like remotely close right. to where i want to be, be at yeah. 
Mm-hmm. And all, all it took was someone to just give me, a, uh, my, my homie Chris Rail gave me the call, just like, hey, what are you doing next week? And I was like, well, I mean, honestly, I'm. It was this was Jan, uh, June of 18. And I was like, honestly, bro, I thought we were getting dinner. Like, are you about to bail on me now? And he's like, no, I was seeing if you wanted to, wanted to work. And I was like, oh, word? And it was my first job, mm-hmm. too. So I'm like, yeah. bro, this, like, this is real. So mm-hmm. I'm thinking like, hell yeah, man, I want to do this. <laughs> right. So I go run to my manager. I'm like, hey, I just got this offer to do this uh, Nestle commercial. And he's like, well, what days you need off? And I was like, this day, this, mm-hmm. basically all next week. He's like. All right, I'll make that happen for you. So it shout out to my my all my staff, all my old Home Depot management staff because they truly Home Depot is legit. I love the Home Depot. I love Home Depot in all honesty. And like people talk down on Home Depot because of the shit that they're doing, but I truly it, that would be the job that I if mm-hmm. everything failed, I would go back low key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they straight up pushed me and they mm-hmm. they they changed my schedule mm-hmm. so i could mm-hmm. finish school Bro. when i got back wow they um and not only that they <laughs> gave me so many days off we're like job and uh, usv mm-hmm. As, that's when i like us then johnny yeah, called yeah. me he was like hey I, I want you for five days would you do it and i told them and i was like hey so have you guys seen that i spit it to him like you seen that Bel-Air trailer <laughs> they were like oh yeah i was like so uh, the guy who did that wants me to hire wants me to work for him next week they're yeah. like are you going to do it? And I'm oh, like, oh, well, I'm asking you, can right. I do it? <laughs> and um, and then after that, that's when I was like, OK, let, I went and talked to my uh, I went and talked to my kitchen, ma- my head manager first. And then I went and talked to my store manager, just like, hey, I think I might, you know, take my little leave for a little bit. And like, would that be OK? I just want to see what this feels like for yeah. for two months. And then if it doesn't work out, I'm back here. You guys got me all to yourself. I'm going to need the little pay bump, but I'm back. Mm-hmm. And they're like, OK, that's fine. That's fine. I do what you got to do. And bro, in that two months, was killing it. Right. And I and I didn't know what was going on. I was like, how am I? Because I, I just I start and you saw me too. I, I remember was, that conversation. I was on there just every every mm-hmm. post, hey, looking for a PA. I'm oh, down. Bro. This for, was in Kansas look, City when yeah, you, just when you bro, first got to Kansas City. Yeah, he was so fresh hard. off the boat, bro. Fresh off well, the boat. When, when I met him. He got here, bro, bro. I, I just I just got here uh, yesterday. Literally, bro. <laughs> oh, that's right. Cause during USV was yeah. the day I moved into KC, yeah, yeah. bro. Yeah, yeah. So the it's like, crazy, bro. I'm telling you, like literally, we all like kind of started, you know, in, you uh, know at, around the same, same and around, yeah. the, and it's it's so it's so wild to think where like all we're of us. At I'm now. talking about like Mike, Laron, all of us. You know what I'm saying? Like we all Laron started. Too? Bro, yeah, that September, like you, like he was still working when he was on you shoot videos. Yeah, he was still working. No, he was, yeah, yeah, he was still working. Yeah, yeah bro, exactly, bro. He's so low key. But I'm like, bro, for real, you're not friendly. He's like, no, bro, I still work for the state. <laughs> 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 yeah, so we like went at the same time because yeah, but, the whole time he was just doing side jobs. I remember the conversation of when you were like, I think I'm gonna quit Home Depot. And yeah. you were like, we, you know, and you were a little like worried. Like, I don't know, man, but like, I think it's time. I, feel I think it. it's time, bro. And, and I, and I did it. And they, cause I, I went, when I went back after my, uh, I'm gonna finish it off real quick. When I went back after my leave, I was very nervous. Cause I was like, man, this, this actually went really well. How do I like, how do I quit? Like, how do I quit a job that was so good to me? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I walked into my store manager's office. She was like, so how was it? How are you doing? I was like. <laughs> I like I was like I don't know like it it was amazing I I met so many people she's like so what do you want to do and I was just kind of like I mean maybe maybe I try it out maybe I she was like I mean if you do want to leave I need your resignation and I was just like well I got it right here <laughs> hey she was like I'm so happy for you and, and that and that oh, was that no, yeah, and yeah. like and then when um and then when COVID hit uh. I called uh, I called Dale my 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 ops manager. I was just because I found out his dad passed away, and I was like, "Hey, I, I heard what happened. I just want to let you know I'm praying for you. I'm here for you. Whatever you need from me, I know I'm you know a few forty five minutes away, but I will make a way to find a way to help you however I need." And he was like, "Don't worry about me. What's what's going on with you?" And I was just like, wow. "Well, just chilling." He's like, "Are you out of work?" And I was like damn how he know so so like i, I was honest I was like yeah it has been kind of stressful he's like all right well come in tomorrow you got your job back wow Dang, where's this at home, uh, home, home depot, depot in st joe bro and that's and that bro that's perfect bro it's like like when you like so what we're doing you know what i'm saying is like we got our own businesses basically you yeah. know what i'm saying we do yeah you know what i'm saying I, and it's like there's no asterisk we all have our own business right? literally. Literally. And, we, and, we, <laughs> <laughs> literally. and so as freelancers it's like that fear like like I'm telling you, bro, like just as I share my journey on Instagram and Facebook and stuff, like I'm transparent, you know, in my stories and stuff, like people will hit me up and be like, man, you like encourage, like, you know, encourage me so much just to like do this, this creative, it could be photography, whatever. I'm like, man, like praise God for that. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad that it could be encouraging, but it's like, 
if you go that lane, it's like that job is always going to be there. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you can always like that fallback. Like you can get a job. Like yeah. they're not going. They're not like going you, anywhere. You know what I'm saying? But that dream is is Fading like fading by the day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So my thing was like, bro, I got to at least try. Mm-hmm. I can't live with myself if I don't try. Mm-hmm. And it's the scariest thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But that, it's like I could not, bro, not try. Putting yourself out there is so. You know what I mean? And, and, and yeah. I, I, uh, it's because co- like what you say, bro. Is because if it doesn't work. I'm back. I'm I'm back in the crib you know designing or, kitchens, bro, and I'm cool yeah, with that. Yeah. You can, there's or, a jobs. You know what I'm saying? You can get a job, and like. or I can fall back on this. And that's one thing also I loved about it because I can just fall back on this. I don't have to go back to Home Depot. I can just fall back on designing kitchens because that that was my oh, shit. Dope. Like yeah, I yeah. love doing yeah, that, yeah, bro. And, I need to talk to you after. No, bro. We can, we, bro, I'm <laughs> telling you, too. I'm being serious too. <laughs> yeah, I can get the bar in the basement. Bro. I can get the cabinets. <laughs> I can get the countertop. I know the cugs already, bro. I'll just let's talk. But um. But it, it's it's definitely one of those things where I I forgot my train of thought. I definitely know my lane now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I definitely know my path now yeah, yeah, because yeah. of meeting people like you, you, you as well over there. We gonna bring Who's him that? on next. But um, I and I and you guys are the reason I I keep doing it. Mm-hmm. Like you asking me to produce Jada, like. And we haven't talked in I don't know how long, yeah, yeah. but you still like, hey, bro, I really need you to because obviously you put put it in his ear. No, nah, bro, you, it was, you. I told him I'm like, bro, I need I need drill on this. Oh, okay, yeah, you know what I'm so saying? it's it's, <laughs> like, it's it's that it's that thought. It's the I thought said, that bro, counts. Hit up drill. You know what I'm saying? I said hit up drill. <laughs> it's, it's, I might have threw a little bit more like, hey, you got to get drill. No, no, hey, drill, bro, perfect. I'm like, bro, hit up drill. Like, but, like literally, bro, you was on my mind the whole time. And I and I appreciate that from you guys because truly, like, and that that's why I still do it. I only produce to watch my friends thrive and create yeah, and to like, throw up on set and to throw up man, <laughs> no, boy. Man, boy hey dedication. look if you get the soulful burp dedication. just know you go you, <laughs> dedication man can i be there to, no sit your ass at home <laughs> look, all right bro, that all right, was a bro. nasty throw bro up too, it was bro. so it was violent i'm oh, all in circle bro. like who what's we this like? <laughs> everyone stop talking we were just looking at bro, your ass bro <laughs> Bro, I'm, okay, okay. Y'all ain't really oh, gonna man, be, let me lay that down. All right, down, just to wrap bro. things up, though. Yeah, sure. I didn't even get to go through my segment. What was your segment? Y'all cut me off, all man. Right, all right, no, I wanted the wackiest thing that's happened to you on set. The wackiest thing oh. literally just happened on Monday. <laughs> and it wasn't even my fault. So for, Ad, for Advent Health, we're shooting in this surgical room. Mm-hmm. All the lights are turned off. We have, like, the one lights that go on the table. And, yeah. like, we got a couple of, like, I think it was some LED panels or whatever. But like outside of the surgical area, all the lights are off. I don't have a headlamp because I know we we're going to be in the dark. <laughs> so like, so but when we pull up, we're already being rushed. Yeah. And the first AC bro was like really stressed out. So I'm like trying to be like, hurry up and get shit figured out. The person, the COVID officer, whoever that was, who was giving out the jumpsuits. We had to mm-hmm. wear like these jump oh, hazmat yeah, yeah. suits. Ah, yep. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She gave me one like <laughs> jump hazmat suit. Where you going? <laughs> and she gave me one like blue booty. Yeah. Like the thing that go on your feet. Right. Just one. But I'm thinking, yeah. So I'm thinking, oh, this must be my hairnet. <laughs> yes, <laughs> my dude. One. <laughs> so I'm putting on this thing all fast, like boom, boom, putting on the, <laughs> the thing. Oh, I'm putting snap. on the jumpsuit. We're in the hospital. People, hospital beds are coming by with patients. I'm like, oh, I got the way. And I put oh, the blue snap. booty on my head. <laughs> And I'm like, dang. Like, this dude like this bro, I'm like, I'm like, yeah. why is it so tight? And I was like, whatever, bro. But I'm in all week, bro. Because then only, only like the central crew could go in the. Hear that shit out loud is funny as hell. And the funny part is the PAs were pushing the button to open the, the hospital doors, so they saw me going in and out like multiple times. Didn't Devin didn't even tell you. That's bro, funny. I'm like, Devin. I can see that. Bro. But I go in and I see like the rest of the crew. I'm like, why am I the only one with the blue hair now? <laughs> And once, like, I saw some more light, I see, like, they all got blue booties on. <laughs> and I'm like, bro. Slowly, bro. I'm like, <laughs> almost like, oh dang. Bro had a- Luckily, I found a hairnet when I went back to My man the had a booty on his head oh bro. for, like, how many hours? Bro, it was probably half a day. Oh I had a booty on my head. I mean, bro. not just wackiest, but let's, it, it can be. Anything that's off the wall that's right, happened you? at set on set, bro. I don't know, man. I can't. I can't. But these questions, like off the off the on the spot, I'm not good at thinking about. I'm I know serious, you got bro. one. You, no. I know you got one. I'm telling you, man. Like honestly, like my shoots, bro. I'm like I stay low key. You know what I'm saying? That's true. That's I pray true. before every shoot. 
straight just in case, true story. Bro, you know what I'm saying? Case. So yeah, I don't. I can't really think of anything right now. I don't know. It has to be. I don't know. With somebody else doing something. Crazy. Uh, it probably was. I mean, you know what I'm saying. You, Adrian's cooled out. He, nothing happens. That's true. Hey, bro. Hey. hey. You know what I'm saying. That's why you need to hire me. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> my man. My man. I think the craziest thing that's probably happened to me now on set. Uh, it was low. Key. Oh no, bro. It was. <laughs> so I, it, I'm gonna go back. I did. I, I acted in that commercial. Mm-hmm. I can't. I'm not gonna say names because like I spelled names last time. But since the NDA's out, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to be a little low key about it. But you can straight up, up, straight up, got set on fire, my dude. Oh snap. yeah, bro. you didn't tell me this. I didn't tell you the story. No. Oh, bro, these. All right, so Jeff, uh, have you you met? I'm assuming you, if you worked with Dan, you worked with Jeff Becker. Then I think so. Yeah. I think so I Jeff's in charge of the grill to like get the flame <laughs> going and whatnot. I'm on. I'm on the grill. Like I'm. I'm doing my thing, and like you know, I gotta like take the lock top off, and the bolts gonna come in like this and like that. So you got the the, the fast bolt cam. Yeah, the, the, the bolt. The, the <laughs> bolts, all that. Yeah, bro. So like, I'm. Uh, they're like, I need you to take it off. And um, you're gonna start. You're gonna act like you're going in to flip, and you're gonna flip, and you're, you're just gonna you're gonna be all into. It. And I was like, all right, cool. So I'm doing it. We're doing take after take, and like the flame's not getting to where he wants it to be. And Jeff's like, well, I mean, I'm I'm doing it as high as I can. So I don't know what else you want me to do. He's like, well, actually, I think the problem is, Jarrell, you just got to take it off a different way. Like you're like pull, you're pulling the flame with with the lid just hop off the lid and then pull it to the side. I was like, all right, bet. Like, well, let's change it up. So <laughs> need I remind you. You're acting in this. I'm acting. Actor. Yeah, I'm an actor. So like I I do exactly that. I'm like, all right, up and over. I go up, over. Yeah, I'm in I'm the bolts, the bolts finally on me. So I'm like in it and like the flame is high. And bro, the flame gets a little too high. <laughs> and like Next thing I know, it's touching my face like this, bro. <laughs> like, I literally feel the flame hitting me like this. And I'm in it for another, like, 10 seconds until, like, I hear, and I was like, oh, I can't do it no more. Bro, Joe, yeah, cousin bro. Joe walks up to me. Kid you not. I'm, I'm like, kind of, like, I'm in a daze. I'm laughing. I'm like, damn, Jeff, you got me this time. You got me. Everybody's, like, freaking out, though, oh, and kind of like, is he okay? Like, what the fuck? Joe comes up to me and says, bro. Wipe your eyelashes off your face. <laughs> and I, bro, I about die laughing oh, on sight. I was like, damn, my man. I'm I'm out here. Like, Jeff, uh, <laughs> wipe, j- your wipe your eyelashes off your face. Straight up. Oh, uh, snap. Dan took a photo of me. You see my 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 goatee singed. My mustache is singed. This Heck is all no. singed. And my hair right here was singed. <laughs> just and I and I took a shower that night, bro, and I that's, smelled burnt hair too. Bro, still. that's why you stay in your lane, bro. That's why I say, hey, that's, well, that's why Drew just paid bro. the big bucks though. Like, about to get those right. royalties. About to get the royalties. Hey, hey. hey. hey for real though, I ain't think about that, bro. bro. When they told me I got usage royalties? off that, cause bro, you get paid royalties, bro. Oh snap, bro. Usage off that, bro. Hey, my cousin did a Red Lobster commercial, bro. They got paid like. 30k bro bro put me on bro, bro. i could be you. asian I'm, i could be mexican <laughs> i could be a teenager or a, a 20 bro you would make a good teenager I could be native like, american these bro. are true facts i know <laughs> dang i'm doing it bro <laughs> for real i'm in here hey, hey. I, have i ever told you my first time meeting e uh-uh. bro i swear to god we told this on i told this on the last on the last podcast but like it's still so funny thinking about like how we met because I, I you he's right you he could be low key anything, for real, for real. but we're all in our little pow, in our, in our little powwow group outside of Potter Hall just chatting da 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 da. He gets a phone call, hola cómo está da da da. He, I'm like, start speaking like, Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he can speak Spanish. Right. They're like, you didn't know that? I was like, no, bro, I didn't know he can speak Spanish. I ain't, I ain't no Filipinos can speak Spanish. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was like, oh shit, he's Mexican. That's when you're like, bro, I'm Mexican. I was like. Oh, bro! I did not know whatsoever. I felt so stupid, yeah, but like ever since then, like we we've been. Connected I need to get and, on, bro. I need to start acting, bro. I, need, I could be on the Disney Channel, on, bro. People bro you could, could be young. on the Disney Channel I hitting the be, Mickey bro. Mouse with it with the wand all day, bro. Come on, <laughs> but man, but thank you so much, Adrian, for coming out, bro. I appreciate you. We're gonna have to get you back in here hey, too, bro. Sure. There's so much time, more to talk bro. about. I love what y'all got going on, bro. So appreciate you, my man, you. for life, bro. Yourself, always, bro. man. Adrian here. This man's gonna. It's kind of hard doing. It's like I feel lame. Like, hey, man. Yeah, around like, around, around the mic, through the mic. Show. Man, once sure. again, this is Filming in Progress. I am your host, Jarrell Washington, with my co-host, Isai. 
my man Adrian came by, showed us what's up today, dropped some knowledge on us, especially about family and depression. Man, like, man, man, it was real gems we dropped today. So make sure y'all pay attention to the stuff we were talking about. Appreciate but until next time, y'all, be safe. Be you, easy. And that's a cut. Hey. That was a good episode. Man. That was a real good episode. Man. Three hours of content. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I just went. Oh, oh shit, yeah. really? That's what we were actually No aiming. way, really?